Advaita Gadadara Srivas Hari Gaur Bhakti Vrindavan. So Srivas Pandit is today is his appearance day. We will begin. <coughs> Shri Vas Pandit Ara Shri Rama Pandita Shri Vas Pandita Ara Shri Rama Pandita Dui Bai Dui Saka Jagata Vidita Shri Vas Pandita Ara Shri Rama Pandita Dui Bai Dui Saka Jagate Vidita The two brothers Shri Vas Pandit and Shri Ram Pandit started two branches that are well known in the world, purport. In the Gora Gonadesh Tipika, verse 90, Srivas Pandit is described as an incarnation of Narada Muni. And Sri Ram Pandit is his younger brother, is said to be an incarnation of Parvat Muni, a great friend of Narada's. Srivas Pandit's wife, Malini, is celebrated as an incarnation of the nurse Ambika, who fed Lord Krishna with her breast milk. And as also noted, his niece, Narayani, the mother of Thakur Vrindavan Das, was the author of Chaitanya Bhagavat, was the sister of Ambika and Krishna Lila. We also understand from the descriptions of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat that after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's acceptance of the sannyas order, Srivas Pandit left Navadvi, possibly because of feelings of separation and dom domiciled at Kormahatta, Omagyan Timirandasya Ginajana Salakaya, Chaksu Unmilitan Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, and Namaste Saraswati Deve. Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishesa Sunyavari Asyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Ve Vajapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Tiranda Sri Advaita Gada Har Srivasa Dikura Bhakti Vinda Panchitadvam Makam Krishnam Bhakti Rupa Svarupakam Bhakti Avataram Bhakti Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam. I pay my obeisances to the same Lord Krishna who has appeared in five aspects as a devotee, as an expansion of a devotee, as an incarnation of a devotee, and as a pure devotee and as the devotional energy. So this describes the, who Srivas Pandit is and also he, as a member of the Sri Panchatattva. There are five personalities, three are Vishnu Tattva, or three are the Supreme Lord himself, and that is uh, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, and Sri Advaita. Sri Advaita is a mixed incarnation with Sadashiva and Mahavishnu in one. Gadadhar is Srimati Radharani with the element of Lalita. She's called Vrindavan Eswari. And uh, Sri Vas Pandit is Sri Narada Muni, who is known in this verse as the pure devotee. Hmm. So we worship these five. Um, as the principal form of worship in this age of Kali, Lord Chaitanya has come as Krishna himself with his uh, internal mood, experiencing his internal energy, Srimati Radharani. So in that uh, manifestation, he brings along with him the devotional energy, the devotional manifestation, devotional incarnation, and the devotion and the pure devotee. And so these five make up the absolute truth. The absolute truth is one, it's not five, but spirit 
also has its different variegatedness within it. Although spirit is one, one means there's no duality, there's no opposites. Just like in the material world, you can only understand something by its opposite. You can only understand cold by its relationship with something that is warm or heat. Old and young, new and old, uh, happy and in distress. Everything is in relationship, but in spiritual um, parlance or spiritual understanding, everything is absolute. It's all one. It's all transcendental. And it's all it's all sentient. It's pure. But in that sentient purity, there is variegatedness for the sake of activity and the sake of uh, uh, yeah, for the sake of activity and for the sake of performing various pastimes. So um, Srivas, in his mention here, he is Narada Muni. And uh, Srivas had three other brothers, actually four other brothers. One brother, brother died very young, and he was the oldest brother. And Srivas was the second in line within the family. You had Sri Ram Pandit, you had Sri Sri Nidhi, and Sri uh, Sri Nidhi and Sri um, who's the other one? Sri Nidhi, Sri Vas, Sri Ram, and Sh can't remember the other brother. Let me see if I can find it here. Hmm. <laughs> I don't remember his other name, other brother's name. But there were five brothers, four during the time of Lord Chaitanya's Leelas. Okay. Sri Nidhi, Sri Ram, Sri Vas, and one more. Oh, is it Sri? Uh, Lord, Lord Chaitanya, huh? Oh, Sri Sripati. Sripati, thank you. Thank you very much. Sripati, Sri Neri, Sri Ram, Sri Vas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. um, during the time of Lord Chaitanya, he would like to perform kirtan in the house of Sri Vas Thakur. It was in the Lord started this on the Akadasi day in the evening, and it lasted for one year. Every night, the Lord would go to the house of Srivas Thakur and perform kirtan throughout the whole evening. It's also mentioned because the Lord performed kirtan on the Akadasi day, where he started on the Akadasi day. We should always perform all night kirtan on the Akadasi. When they do that in Sri Dham Mayapur, we begin in the evening and go right through until Mangalarti the next morning. Um, Lord Chaitanya would call his intimate disciples and he would like to dance using Makunda or good, uh, not Gadadhar, but uh, uh, Advaita Charya would sing and the Lord would dance. It mentions one time uh, Srivasa's mother-in-law, she wanted to see the dancing, so she hid in the courtyard to watch. But the Lord is very sensitive to who is there, and therefore when he was dancing, or when he began his dancing, immediately he stopped thinking, there is someone here who is not supposed to be here. In other words, someone who's less than pure. And he stopped and he inquired from Srivas. Srivas said, we don't know of anyone. The Lord began again, but then he stopped after a few minutes and said, I'm sure someone is here and it doesn't belong here. So 
Srivas Pandit went looking through and found that in the area of the courtyard hiding was his mother-in-law. And therefore he very surreptitiously and very quickly removed his mother-in-law from the scene. Mm -hmm. Srivas Thakur was always concerned that Lord Chaitanya always have the best possible atmosphere during his dance. And that was his service to the Lord. It wasn't a designated service, but it's something he accepted to make sure everything was right for the Lord's kirtan. Because we know, and this is Lord Chaitanya came to spread the Yuga Dharma, the Harinam Sankirtan. The Lord not only taught it, but he also practiced it for his own transcendental enjoyment. The Lord loved singing, and dance, and kirtan. We should also develop that taste for kirtan. Some of us may have a taste for kirtan. Others may be some taste, and some of us, we don't have much of a taste. But we need to develop that taste for kirtan because kirtan is the means for self-realization in this age. Krishna Varnam, Tusa Krishna, Sangopanga Savarshidam, Yagyai, Sankirtanai, Prayai, Yajanti Hisumeda Saha. Those who are sufficiently endowed with good intelligence perform the, the sacrifice in this age, the Harinam Sankirtan, congregational glorification of the Lord by chanting the Hare Krishna. Mahamantra. Another time, one Brahmin, he was very austere and he lived only on milk. He came to meet Srivas. Srivas could understand this boy is very nice, he's austere, he lives simply. So the boy was allowed to come in and he wanted to see the dancing. But again, Mahaprabhu, when he began his dance, something is wrong here. Who is here that doesn't belong here? Srivas. Well, my Lord, yes, there is one person. And then um, he said, well, he's very austere. He drinks only milk. The Lord immediately said, get him away. Send him out. So Srivas, when the boy actually heard it, he became a little fearful and he turned around and left. But he was happy that he was able to see the Lord. To, to a, for a few minutes dancing. And the Lord took compassion on him and knowing that he was by nature very humble and didn't mind becoming chastised by the Lord, he called him back and gave him his mercy. He placed his lotus feet on the head of the boy and blessed him with pure devotion to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And that boy became a member of the devotees after some time. Um, one time, there was some sickness for the Srivas Thakur's youngest son, who was only four years old. And the boy was really sick. And finally, during the evening, when Lord Chaitanya was just about to bring in, begin his kirtan, the boy left his body. The relatives in the house were overwhelmed with grief and started to cry. Srivas Thakur inquired from them, why are they crying? And then they informed him. And Srivas Thakur immediately just said, well, yes, but um, you know, I can give up many sons and I can give up my own life, but I cannot tolerate disturbance to Lord Chaitanya. So uh, please cry quietly. So that was impossible. Then he told them, all right, if you cannot cry quietly, at least postpone your crying to another time. <laughs> Which means very difficult to ask, but that's what Srivas, he didn't want the Lord to be disturbed. And the Lord continued his kirtan. And this went on for seven and a half hours. Towards the end of the evening, just before the sun rose, the Lord asked Srivas, is there some calamity that's happened here? I can see there's some misfortune. I'm feeling that something sad has happened. My dear Lord, 
as responded by Srivas, what could be wrong by your presence? The fact that you are here, everything becomes auspicious. But since you asked, you know, my youngest son, he died. Oh, really? When? Why didn't you tell me? Why well, didn't this want to disturb your kirtan? He died about seven and a half hours. Let's go see him. So he ran into the, the area where the boy was. Lord Chaitanya went immediately up to the boy, placed his beautiful, huge lotus hand on the chest of the boy and said, my dear, my dear son, the son of Srivas, where have you gone? The boy immediately sat up and said, my dear Lord, my time in this body has finished. I have taken so many bodies and now I have received this particular body. But by your arrangement, my time is up and I will go on to my next destination. When everyone heard the boy talking, complete spiritual philosophical knowledge, everyone became peaceful at mind. And then of course, the boy lay down and disappeared again. Lord Chaitanya was so overwhelmed with affection for Srivas that he kept saying over, how can I ever leave Srivas? How can I ever leave the association of Srivas and his wonderful family? And the devotees were thinking, why is he speaking like that? What is he talking about leaving? Later on, of course, the Lord decided to take sannyas and that's what he was referring to when he was speaking in that manner. But before then, the Lord wanted to show his affection to Srivas, and he personally arranged for the last rites to be done for the boy. They took the boy down to the Ganges River, bathed the body, decorated the body nice, and performed the, the last results, uh, last rites for a departed soul. And the Lord did that himself. He organized and participated in the whole ceremony just to show his love for Srivas. The Lord would perform kirtan every night in the house of Srivas, and some of the neighbors would become uh, anxious. They would want to come in, but they were not allowed in, so they would find reasons to criticize. They can call the devotees, well, we're decent people, we're good people, we know what they're doing behind these doors. That's why they won't let us in. They call in all these young girls and they perform all these tantric rites. They're doing all kinds of unmentionable activities, which because we are such good people, we don't want to speak about. And so uh, they were speaking like that and they would find different ways of criticizing Lord Chaitanya and Srivas. There was one Brahmin his name was Gopal Champu. He was a worshiper of Durga Devi. He decided to defame Srivas. So one night after the program was over in the house, uh, well, the, actually the next morning, he put all the paraphernalia, some meat, a bottle of red wine, a red rose, and the worship paraphernalia used to worship Mother Durga. The next morning when Shivas came out, he said, he called all his neighbors. He said, look, now you know I'm a Shakta worshiper. No one, of course, believed him, at least the decent people in the area who knew Shivas. And they all came and swept the material away and purified the whole house with Kaldam. But that same Gopala Chapala, because of his offense to Shivas, immediately came down with leprosy. Because of that, he was no longer able to stay in the area of Navadweep and he had to go live somewhere else. So he chose to live on the banks of the Ganga. <clears throat> and he was living there, staying there, suffering from his disease. Lord Chaitanya passed. And I'll give you the exact words that Lord Chaitanya said to him. Uh, we, Gopal, when he when he saw the Lord, he approached him and prayed to be free from his disease. Mahaprabhu angrily answered, O sinner, enemy of the devotees, I will not save you. I will have you eaten by worms like this for millions of births. You made it seem as though Srivash had worshipped Kali. 
So you will dwell for a million lifetimes in the hell known as Ravava. After some time, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and came back in that area. When he was walking, again, Gopal Chapla begged him for forgiveness. At that time, Mahaprabhu became compassionate and told him, you can only get forgiveness if you go to Srivas. If he forgives you, then you are forgiven. And of course he did. He was actually sorry. The Lord made him suffer enough to get to the point where he was actually sorry for his offense. Sometimes we commit an offense, but we feel the sorrow we feel is not because we committed offense, but because we know we will have to get a, a negative reaction for that. So we, we, we lament thinking in terms of what will happen to me now I committed an offense. But that is not retribution for the offense. The real retribution is to ask pardon from the offended person and to pray sincerely <clears throat> for forgiveness. And uh, one has to be sorry that I caused this other person some discomfort or I did something that was offensive to them. So offense is not relieved unless one is actually free from that feeling uh, of, uh, or one is, has adopted the feeling of genuine uh, remorse. In other words, uh, I committed offense to this person, therefore um, I caused that person difficulty. So, um, and of course he came back to Srivas and Srivas immediately gave him forgiveness and told him to go to one very elevated devotee, I think his name was Vamsidas, and ask him to take initiation and become his devotee. He did, but Vams and Vamsi Das gave him initiation. And later on, this Devananda Pandit became, I mean, I'm sorry, not Devananda Pandit, but Gopal Chapa became a great devotee of the Lord. So much so that he developed a real affection for all the Lord's devotees and was writing poetry and songs and glorification of the Lord. And those songs and poetry are actually very, very deep in Vaishnav, uh, lo love for the Vaishnavas. <clears throat> and so these are some of the pastimes. Of course, one of the pastimes was when uh, Advaita Charya decided to have a kirtan with all of Lord Chaitanya's followers. But then he instructed everyone, we're not gonna sing Hare Krishna mantra, we're gonna sing we're going to sing Goranga. We're going to chant the names of Goranga. We're going to chant the names of Lord Chaitanya. So the devotees were a little reluctant, but uh, Advaita was very determined to get everyone to. And so using his power and his influence, he created this mood and everybody joined in. <clears throat> and then they were chanting. Lord Chaitanya heard the kirtan from a distance and started to come. And as he got closer, he heard what they were chanting. Now, hearing his own name being chanted, he became disappointed. He thought to himself, why are, the, why are the devotees chanting Krishna's name? What are they chanting? So the devotees had saw that the Lord had approached from a distance. So they started to stop, but Advaita encouraged them to sing louder. And that's what happened. When that happened, the Lord turned around and left and went into his own little room nearby, lay down and took rest. After some time he awoke and Srivats was there. This was in the late morning time. And um, the Lord said to Srivats, why don't the devotees chant Krishna's name? Why are they chanting all these other things? And Srivas, he took his hand, he held it up in the direction of the sun with his palms flat open. 
the Lord said, Srivas, what are you doing? Srivas said, I'm covering the sun with my hand. The Lord said, you can't do that. It's not possible to cover the sun with your hand. Yes, and it's not possible for you to hide from us. So the Lord, in this way, Srivas indicated that we know who you are <laughs> and we cannot help but want to glorify you. That is our happiness. Another time, um, let me see if I can find this particular pastime. It's interesting. I'll read it. So let's see. <laughs> Let's see if I can find this one. Mahaprabhu. One time Mahaprabhu came to his guru's birthplace and showed his respects by taking some dust and wrapping it in his cloth. Right after that, he went to the house of Srivas. All the members of Srivasa's family joyfully received him. And everyone become, became absorbed, wanting to serve. Mahaprabhu noticed this and said to Srivas, you're a householder with a large family. You have to earn money in order to maintain your family. Otherwise, how will you be able to do so? Srivas first replied that he had no wish to make money. And then he clapped his hands three times. Maharaj asked him what that meant. Mahaprabhu asked him what it meant. And he said, and again, he repeated the clapping. One, one, I will fast one, two, three. Then if I still get nothing to eat, if my family doesn't get anything to eat, I will tie a jug to my neck and jump in the Ganga. <laughs> This was his response. Mahaprabhu responded to Srivasa's statement by giving a roar and repeated the blessings he had given him before. Even if the goddess of fortune has to go begging, you will never want, there will never be any want in your home. Lord Krishna himself provides everything that his exclusive devotees need. This is also very interesting. If we remain fixed and develop our uh, absorption in devotional service, whatever we need will come. And many times, even things we don't need, but we want, the Lord will provide. No need to ask the Lord for anything material. Why waste time asking for things that are material when we can have an opportunity to ask for what is really beneficial in the long run or even in the immediate sense, and that is the opportunity to engage in the Lord's service and in the service of the Lord's devotees. But we see, and this happens, the devotees can note this, we, uh, we know that if you want something or if you need something, you don't have to go seeking out or even try asking around. You just continue on your devotional service and Krishna provides it. He likes to provide for his devotee. It's not like it's an inconvenience for him. He wants to show his affection for his devotee when he sees his devotee is, doesn't want anything but only devotional service. And if that devotee does have some hidden desire for anything, the Lord will arrange that. Okay, these are some of the pastimes. Uh, today is his appearance day. Uh, today also, I should add this, <clears throat> uh, one of uh, one very great sannyasi, one of the most loved sannyasis ever in our ISKCON movement, His Holiness Srihar Swami Maharaj, departed the world on this day in the year 2004 the actual date was March 14th. He has he left many, many disciples. Uh, where I am here in Slovenia, there are 15 disciples 
that are still here and serving. The Srihar Swami was a wonderful devotee. He was known as the Jolly Swami. <laughs> he was always very jolly. And he was always laughing, very friendly to the devotees, but also very strict in his Krishna conscious practice. He was very, very instrumental in building and propagating the whole life membership program all over India. <clears throat> he, because of him, so many people became life members in our Krishna conscious movement. Among said many other things, he was a staunch worshiper of Lord Nisringadev. He used to keep a very ferocious deity of Lord Nisringadev, in, Lord Nisringadev in his most ferocious form, breaking through the pillar, coming out of the pillar and seeing Harani Kashipu. So he had a beautiful deity of the Lord emerging from the pillar. <clears throat> So Sri Swami is a uh, wonderful devotee who we remember. And uh, <clears throat> soon, um, it's been a long time coming, but the devotees are still working on putting out a biography on his life. I think there is one biography that was already released, but they want to do something that's even more. So the second biography is will come out very soon. Okay, I just wanted to mention this great personality. He was also a good friend. And uh, I remember him when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement back in 1973. He came to the Brahmachari farm in 1974. And everyone, we, we respected him as a very senior devotee at the time, we were all brahmacharis living in the ashram. Okay, so we'll stop there. And uh, any comments or questions on the Srivastakur or anything related to Lord Chaitanya? Thank you so much, Maharaj. It was very nice to hear about Srivas Pandit. Thank you so much. Uh, mm. uh, dear devotees, please go ahead with the question. Okay. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Roberto Prabhuji. Please go ahead. Hi, Krishna Di Maharaj. Please, my humble obeisances. All glories to Shiva Prabhupada. All glories to all Vaishnava assembled. I have a question because we say that Charitanya Mahaprabhu came as an ideal devotee, and then we have Srivas, which is also kind of incarnation of a pure devotee. So, like, what is it's like how to see the difference, or like, uh, are they both like incarnations of pure devotees, perfect devotees, or any comments on that? Yeah, well, the Lord is playing the part of a pure devotee. Sri Vastakur is a pure devotee. The Lord is not a devotee. He is the Lord, but he's playing that part. But Sri Vastakur is Narada Muni come again, so he is a pure devotee. That's his identity. The Lord is Vishnu, Vishnu Shakti or... Yeah, he's Vishnu Shakti. And he is the Lord, and Srivas is the devotee of the Lord. <coughs> so there's a qualitative difference between the two of them. I understand. I guess that Srivas Prabhu came here to assist the Lord as a pure devotee when he is, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. He makes up the absolute, the absolute truth is made up of five principles. The Lord incarnation, the Lord manifestation, the Lord expansion, the Lord pure devotee, the Lord energy. Each one of these, we pancha tattva makam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam bhakta avataram bhakta kyam namami bhakti shakti kam. And this, this makes up the absolute truth. Five features in one. So here, 
it is explained uh, as a devotee, as an expansion of a devotee, as an incarnation of a devotee, as a pure devotee, and as devotional energy. So all five of them are described in these five different ways. Mm -hmm. But Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Lord. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself. Thank you for our very interesting class, Guru Maharaj. Um, clarification question around... When Mahaprabhu, the Lord, was excluding certain devotees from the Kirtans, how do we interpret this in our timeline, time period, where we're sometimes accused of being, you know, kind of racist or gender biased, and sometimes we exclude certain ethnicity groups, the certain Sanghas, and so on. Can you add any light on how we could interpret that so much? Well, Lord Chaitanya's movement for the general people was to include everyone. In the house of Sri Thakur, he did that. These were exclusive kirtans only for his intimate associates. So for the preaching program, we have programs for the public and we invite everyone in. But sometimes in our kirtan programs, we have more uh, smaller groups who are, what we say, fixed on kirtan. They're absorbed in the kirtan mood. They are kirtan ears. And so we do that just to uh, bring about a, a stronger spiritual energy. But in general, we don't exclude anyone. It's just, uh, it's just a preference that sometimes more advanced devotees get together and they, they keep it within a certain context because that way the devotional energy all goes in the right direction. But for the sake yeah. of preaching and having kirtan, many, many times we open it up to everyone. When we have our kirtans in the temples, everyone can come like that. Mm. Mm. But you find that when you have a larger group of people who, who are just coming in, the energy is not the same because mm. people are not fixed in kirtan. They're still, but for preaching, we allow mm. anyone and everyone to come. Mm. It's just like, uh, when you're going to get married, you send out wedding invitations, but you don't open your door and say, I'm having a wedding, everyone can come. <laughs> it's not like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. You see the difference? <laughs> well, that's that's a really nice explanation. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I get the point now. Yeah, thank you. All right, Krishna, thank you very much. Hey, Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, there is a question in the chat box. Shall I read it for you? Please. Mm -hmm. uh, it is from Dharma Vatsandas Prabhuji. He's asking when the Lord appears, some incarnations of the Lord have elements of other persons as well. It seems understandable to me and sometimes completely incomprehensible. How can I understand that better? Can you clarify a little, please? And the example he gives is... Can you repeat the whole question again? I seem to miss the point of the question. Okay. When the Lord appears, some incarnations of the Lord have elements of other persons as well. It seems... What does that, no, what does that mean, elements of other persons as well? So, example he gives is Sri Advaita Acharya. Okay. So it seems understandable to me and sometimes completely incomprehensible. 
How can I understand that better? Exactly. Don't you just accept it? <laughs> it's just the way the Lord is. <laughs> if He wants to manifest Himself in Himself, <laughs> or if He wants to come in a dual incarnation, He can do that. It's all for the sake of His uh, performing His pastimes, or for the sake of um, managing something material. Uh, it's just the way the Lord works. Mm -hmm. Sometimes He. He come, when he comes as Krishna, he exhibits his full potency. When he comes as Ram, he's still the incarnate, he's still the Lord, but he doesn't exhibit the full potency of the Lord, although he has the full potency of the Lord. When he comes as a Dwaita, he's a mixed, he, he's Sada Shiva, the original Shiva, like that. And he's also Mahavishnu in one. So the Lord is variegated. He comes for different reasons, for different purposes, to, to perform different activities. And he takes on a particular mood accordingly. That's how he operates. All we can do is accept it. What can we say? If you ask a person, well, why is your personality the way it is, because it's my personality. That's why. <laughs> if you ask the Lord why he's like that, that's why he, because that's him. <laughs> that's what he does. And there's a reason behind that also. Uh, Dwaita Charya, in the mood of Shiva, was showing compassion to the fallen soul. In the mood of Mahavishnu, he doesn't exhibit that same type of compassion, but being a combined incarnation, he he exhibits that mood of compassion of, of Lord Shiva. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I understand uh, a little better. <laughs> Krishna, who he's, he is, who he is. <laughs> How can you understand why he does it? Well, he gives the reasons in terms of his activities, but the Lord is independent. He doesn't have to fit into our definitions of what the Lord should be or should not be. Yes, thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. I hope it's clear because it's important. That we don't, we want to understand the Lord. And so he appears in different ways. Mahanasini Radha Mataji has raised hand. Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I have a question if the Lord uh, can uh, take us uh, or yeah, take us uh, the taste for chanting away and what is the cause of it? Uh, the Lord, yeah, for offenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the main cause. Well, we can commit offenses to the Vaishnavas. We can commit offenses to the Holy Name. If we continue to commit offenses to the Holy Name and keep chanting, then, then after a while the taste will not be there. The idea is if you are chanting offensively, continue to chant and try to... Uh, Understand what is the, the the offenses you're committing and try to avoid that. So yeah, generally we lose the taste because of offenses. Is there a way give, how to avoid? Yeah, don't give up. Don't give up your chanting because of that. Because 
Just continue to chant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even if it's tasteless, sometimes it's tasteless and sometimes it's more tasty. Sometimes it's so difficult that we want to quit. And sometimes it's so nice we don't want to stop. <laughs> Just continue, and after a while you'll start you'll start getting rid of the offenses. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Sri Devi Mataji has a question. Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you, Vinda. Uh, please give my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Tilak Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. My question is about part of this lecture, which was nectarian in that where Shiva says, if I don't meet the prasadam, I will drown myself because the Lord provides for us. On this question, I would like to ask you how to address issues that come up when we talk to people. I've just come away from, um, North Carolina, and I encountered young devotees saying, I cannot chant my rounds. I have to work all day. It's a question of survival. I'm a young single mother. I have to take care of my child. I just don't have time for chanting. Uh, I'm just trying to put food on the table, clothes on our back, and send my child to school. Where's the time for chanting? I have to provide for her. I'm just looking for rent money. And it's very difficult. My life is so difficult. And uh, how you can expect me to do all stuff. That's generally the mood. Another young lady told me, uh, you seriously think without my working hard, Krishna is going to give me a house that just sitting around and for the Lord to provide for me? How is it possible? I have to work hard for all these things. And you're saying is not practical. Just chant and engage in the service of the Lord uh, is very entitled. And we can't expect the Lord to do everything on a platter was like this uh, one one girl well she's an aspiring disciple she came to me she just had recently had a new child and the child was taking up all of her time and she couldn't find time for chanting but she was thinking I still have to find time but she couldn't the child was practically 24 hours a day so um, she approached me and I gave her a formula for chanting and uh, she thought it was worth trying. She tried it, it worked. And now she's still taking care of her child uh, completely and chanting 16 rounds. So people, when they use, when they don't want to change and they just simply give you a reason and you can see they're insincere. They're not serious about devotional love. If they're serious, if they have a problem, they will come and find solutions. But if they're not serious, they will conclude by their own mental speculation and it's convenient. Now, because the faith is not there. They're not serious. That's all. So they just, uh, if they want help, they can get help. But if they don't want help, they'll come up with reasons why they shouldn't be doing what they should do. And then they complain and complain about being stressed, being anxious, being nervous, being this, being that. Um, but when we offer the solution, they don't want to take it up. Well, what can you do? So just humbly uh, accept what, where they're at and just leave them alone and carry on? No, if you could say something to, to, to encourage them to look for a solution, that would be good. But if you've tried that and they still reject that, then what can you do? Yes, Guru Mahal. Thank you. I've been speaking with how to speak in such a way that I can encourage them and how to be stern and say, you know, you've taken initiative 
Christian, you know, chanting your 16 they don't, they don't. They don't want to, they don't want to hear that they have to chant 16 rounds. They may be more open to a, to a solution that will help them get to that point. Don't, don't preach to them, give them some, some ideas how they can overcome their problem. Um, I did try that. I said, why don't you down and look at your schedule, sort of helped out with, these are the blocks of time you do have in which you can chant your round. So I hope that was helpful. Well, you did, yeah, that's, yeah, we want to, you can make some attempt, but ultimately they have to have the desire. If they don't have the desire, it's not going to happen. We need to keep our own faith strong in the face of this kind of thing. So I must confess to being a little shaken up by all this negative uh, attitude towards chanting. Would you please help? me to become stronger in my own faith in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, go to Mayapur. <laughs> yes, good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> now you have to do is get to Mayapur. Your faith will increase. <laughs> That's your destination right now. The problem with what you're having now is lack of association. And that's a problem for a lot of people during this particular time we're in, is that we're not able to associate as much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Just one, one minute association with a pure devotee and you can uh, immediately you know, purify your consciousness of all sinful reactions. Thank you so much for your wonderful mercy every morning. This lifeline that we are thinking to, to save ourselves from the attacks. Thank you so much. Pranams Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shri Prabhupada and yourself. I just need a clarification, Maharaj. You, um, Shiva, Shiva's Thakur was the only member of the Pancha Tattva who was Jiva Tattva. Is there a significance why that was? <clears throat> yeah, this makes up the absolute truth. It's five, five features, and one is the pure devotee. <clears throat> Devotional expansion, devotional incarnation, devotional uh, expansion, incarnation, uh, devotee avatar, I think, devotee energy, and pure devotee. Five in one. That's the absolute truth. So the pure devotee also is a member of the absolute truth. I think we mentioned that verse, I mentioned the verse. Uh, yeah, expansion, incarnation, pure devotee, devotional energy, and uh, devotional manifestation. Five aspects of the absolute truth. It's all one, but within within five different categories. How can you understand something that is <clears throat> variegated, but is at the same time one? That's the nature of spirit. Spirit is never divided. Material is divided. Spiritual is always absolutely one. But in that oneness, there is variegatedness. And these variegatedness have categories of activities. And he, the pure devotee, fits into that one category.
That's the absolute truth. <laughs> Yes, Marge. This is quite deep, actually. I think I need to read further about this absolute truth. Where would I um, find this information more simplified? Yeah, go to Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Adi Leela, chapter 7, and just read that whole chapter. Read it. Until you can start understanding it better. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All right, well, everything is there in Prabhupada's books. This is also there in his lectures, too. His lectures on Chaitanya Charitamrita, also. Especially the lectures of Ali Lila. We can't figure it out. We have to have it explained to us. And then as we practice devotional service and develop a sense of uh, purity, in other words, we, as we become pure in our service, all these things become clear, more clear and understandable. We are very small, the absolute truth is very large and very way beyond the reach of our senses. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, very small. Maharaj, very small question. Uh, like, um, why do some of the devotees of Krishna have this Thakura in the end? Like, Shrivas Pandit also has Shrivas Thakur, and many other devotees like Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Narottam Das Thakur. So, why? Yeah, Thakur really means. Uh, Let's see, the actual definition of Thakur, you'd have to look it up in the, in the you know, dictionary of spiritual terminologies. But it, it stands for someone who is uh, on a very high platform. You have Masai, Mahasai, you have uh, Swami, you have Maharaj, you have, um, what else? You have Thakur. Well, these are just titles of uh, elevation. Like that. Thakur is beyond Swami and Maharaj. You have Paramahansa. These are all elevated terminologies to indicate a great personality. Sometimes Krishna is called Takurji. Takurji, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, just find some written definition. They're, they're available. Mm -hmm. Okay. To get the exact wording. But ultimately, it stands for an exalted personality. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Oh, so we have Takar, Takarani, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Um, Yes, Maharaj, it's been one hour, so... Uh, okay, so we can stop here. Okay. 
Thank you, Runda. Thank you to all the devotees. Um, today is Sri Vasta Chorus of Parents. Uh, we would like to encourage all the devotees to take some time and read about Sri Vasta Kaur and his pastimes and his, uh, his deep affection and commitment to Lord Chaitanya. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare, Hare Krishna. Thank you for your time and association. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, dear devotees.